Hi, I'm Kathy. In this lesson, we're going to look at applications of quadratic functions in models. Our specific objectives are applications of quadratic functions and quadratic models. Let's start with a, an application. We want to solve the problem. Suppose that x represents one of two positive numbers whose sum is 30. The first thing we want to do to solve this is represent the other of the two numbers in terms of x. x is one of them. The two of them add to 30. So the other number must be 30 minus x. Secondly, we want to write down what are the restrictions on x. Well, x must be a number that added to another number's sum is 30. So and x has to be positive. The first thing to note is that x is positive, and x itself must be less than 30. Continuing with that application, what we want to do is determine a function p that represents the product of the two numbers. p is the function x times the other number, 30 minus x. Let's continue. What we want to do now is determine analytically the two such numbers whose product is a maximum. Well, here's our maximum product equation. We want to find the numbers whose product is a maximum. First, let's distribute x to get 30x minus x squared. Notice that this is a quadratic equation. It's a quadratic equation that opens downward. Its maximum product is going to occur at the vertex. Recall that the x-coordinate of the vertex is found by using the formula negative b over 2a. In our particular quadratic function, b is 30, a is negative 1. So the x-coordinate of the vertex is negative 30 over 2 times negative 1, which simplifies to 15. We want to determine analytically the two such numbers whose product is a maximum. Well, one of the numbers is 15, and if the sum of the two is 30, the other number is also 15. We also want to answer the question, what is this maximum product? We find the maximum product by evaluating our product function at 15. And we can use either version. Let me use the second version, replacing each x with 15. 30 times 15 minus 15 squared simplifies to 450 minus 225, which simplifies to 225. And that is the maximum product. Well, let's try another quadratic equation application. A farmer wishes to enclose a rectangular region. He has 120 feet of fencing and plans to use one side of his barn as part of the enclosure. Let x represent the length of one of the parallel sides of the fencing. So this is the fencing. x is one of the parallel sides. And since he has 120 feet of fencing, this is 120 feet of fencing, the length of this side can be represented by 120 minus 2x. Well, let's work through this application. Here's what we want to do. Determine a function a that represents the area of the region in terms of x. Now, the region's a rectangle, and you know that the area of a rectangle is the length times the width. Our rectangle has length 120 minus 2x and width x. Distributing an x, the area can be written 120x minus 2x squared. Well, let's consider what the restrictions on x should be. x is a side or a piece of fencing, a side of the enclosure. So it's going to have to be greater than 0, positive. And then if you think about 120 minus 2x being another side, let me write that over here. That also needs to be positive. Solving this inequality by adding 2x and dividing by 2, we can see that x needs to be less than 60. Let's attach that to the rest of our restriction on x. 
Let's continue. We want to graph the function, the area function, in a viewing window that shows both x-intercepts and the vertex of the graph. Well, let's use a graphing calculator to help. Look back at your area function, and on a graphing calculator, we're going to enter 120x minus 2x squared. Now, we want to choose a window that'll show the things we're interested in, the x-intercepts and the vertex. I suggest setting x min to 0 and x max to 60. Remember, those were our restrictions on x. Let's set, uh, let's set our x scale to 10, something reasonable. Let's set our y min to 0 and our y max to 1800. And I'll need to pick something reasonable as a y scale. I think I'll pick uh, 500 as a scale for the y-axis. Now if I push graph, I see a graph of my area function. I see both x-intercepts and the vertex. I'll use the trace button to get close to the vertex. And actually, the trace button lands me exactly on the vertex. Notice by pushing that, I'm able to show you that I put in 120 minus 2x squared. The vertex has coordinates 30, 1800. Continue, let's continue with that application. The next thing we want to answer is what does the point 18, 1512 on the graph mean? Well, 18 is an x value, 1512 is an area value on the graph. What that means is if we were to use parallel sides of 18 feet, the area enclosed would be 1,512 square feet. Uh, our final question for this application is, what is the maximum area the farmer can enclose? And if you look back at your graph and calculator, that's the y-coordinate of the vertex. 1,800 square feet is the most area the farmer can enclose. Let's look at another example application. A building is two feet from a nine-foot fence that surrounds a property. A worker wants to wash a window in the building 13 feet from the ground. He plans to place a ladder over the fence so it rests against the building. He decides he should place the ladder at least eight feet from the fence for stability. To the nearest foot, how long a ladder will he need? Well, we definitely need to look at a picture to give us an idea of what's necessary here. So here's a picture. This part is the building. Here's the fence. This angled line represents the ladder. Notice that the ladder's eight feet from the fence. And then there's a, the, the fence itself is two feet from the building. The fence is nine feet itself. And the window that he needs to wash is 13 feet above the ground. Well, what we need out of this picture in order to solve the equation is a triangle. This is the triangle that will help us find the length of the ladder. One side is 10 feet, one side is 13 feet, and the hypotenuse, because this is a right triangle, is x. Let's use the Pythagorean theorem. Substituting into the Pythagorean theorem, we can say 10 squared plus 13 squared is x squared, the length of the ladder squared. 10 squared is 100. 13 squared is 169. Add those together to get 269. And solving this equation using the square root proper property, we should consider both positive and negative the square root of 269. But the length of the ladder can't be negative. So the solution we're looking for is positive the square root of 269. And to make this reasonable, we should approximate it using a calculator. That's approximately 16.4 feet. The ladder should be approximately 16.4 feet long. Well, now it's your turn to try a problem. Pause the video and work the following problem, then restart it when you're ready to check your work. Here's what I want you to do. The boat is being pulled into a dock with a rope attached to the boat at water level. When the boat is 12 feet from the dock, the length of the rope from the boat to the dock is 3 feet longer than twice the height of the dock above the water. Find the height of the dock. 
Well, here's a picture that will help with this problem. The boat's 12 feet from the dock. This is the dock here. The dock is H feet above the water. The length of the rope is uh, three more than twice the height of the dock. Pause the video and work this problem, then restart it when you're ready to check. Well, let's see how you did. This is the information we want from our picture. It's a right triangle with a right angle here. Let's substitute into the Pythagorean theorem. We'll write h squared plus 12 squared equals 2h plus 3 squared h squared plus 144 equals this squared, which is 4h squared plus 12h plus 9. We have a quadratic equation. We need to set it equal to 0. I'll subtract h squared and subtract 144. To get 0 equals 3h squared plus 12h plus 9 from 144 is negative 135. Let's factor a 3 from each term to get h squared plus 4h minus 45. And this quadratic factors further into, let's see, 45 is 9 times 5 plus 9 minus 5. Now using the zero product property, I know I can set each factor equal to zero, and I see that I, when solving the equation, get two values of h, negative 9 and positive 5. However, as a side of a triangle, negative 9 cannot be. A side of a triangle can't be negative. So h is 5. And if h is 5, the amount of rope connecting the boat to the dock is 2 times 5 plus 3, or 13 feet of rope. Well, let's continue and look at a, a quadratic model. Here's what we want to do. To determine the appropriate landing speed of a small airplane, the formula d equal 0.1s squared minus 3s plus 22 is used where s is the initial landing speed in feet per second, and d is the length of the runway in feet. If the landing speed's too fast, the pilot may run out of runway. If the speed is too slow, the plane may stall. Now, if the runway is 800 feet long, what is the appropriate landing speed, and what is the landing speed in miles per hour? What we're going to do is substitute 800 for d in our model. That gives us an equation that looks like 800 equals 0.1s squared minus 3s plus 22. This is a quadratic equation. Let's set it equal to 0 by subtracting 800, which gives us 0.1s squared minus 3s plus 22 uh, minus 800 is minus 778. Now let's substitute into the quadratic formula. Instead of solving for x, we are solving for s. s is going to be negative, negative 3, plus or minus the square root of negative 3 squared, minus 4 times 0.1, times negative 778, all divided by 2 times 0.1. Continuing to simplify, s is 3, plus or minus the square root of 9, and then I'm going to have plus 4 times 0.1 times 778. Now using a calculator, you can see that that's 311.2, all divided by 0.2. Continuing, s is equal to 3, plus or minus the square root of that sum, which is 320.2, divided by 0.2. Again, using a calculator, we need to approximate the square root of 320.2. If you do so, you'll see that that's 17.89.
And so I have 3 plus or minus 17.89 divided by 0.2. There are two answers here, but only one of them makes sense for the problem. I have 3 plus the square root of 17.89 divided by 0.2, and 3 minus the square root of 17.89 divided by 0.2. 3 minus 17.89 is going to be negative, so that answer doesn't make sense. The answer we need is 3 plus 17.89 divided by 0.2, which is 20.89 divided by 0.2. And if you do that division, this number is 104.45 feet per second. So that's the speed of the plane in feet per second. But part of the question that we want to find is, or answer, is what is that number of feet per second in miles per hour? 104.45 feet per second, we need to translate, so that's feet per one second to miles per hour. Now I know that 5,280 feet is one mile, and that will allow me to change from feet to miles. Now I need to change from seconds to hours. I know that uh, 60 seconds is a minute and 60 minutes is an hour, so 3,600 seconds is one hour. And written this way, I can see that my units simplify so that the units on my answer will be miles per hour. Using a calculator, I'll multiply 104.45 times 3,600 and divide all of that by 5,280. And that comes out to approximately 71.22 miles per hour. Well, in this lesson, we've looked at applications using quadratic equations and a, um, a quadratic model. Be sure to work lots of exercises from your textbook for practice.